Season drawing ever closer and Tramway have been fairly busy, haven't you, on the recruitment front and I know it's always part of what you do. How pleased are you at this stage of proceedings? Yeah, very. Um, one, one thing we tried to do was to do our business early uh, and I think I've said um, previously to you guys that uh, you know, I, I think at times we've wasted up to 30% of our playing budget. So your playing budget is discretionary, it's what you, what you want to spend um, and I actually think recruitment is the biggest single factor in whether you're successful or not. And two elements to that, uh, one is how much you spend and then the other side to it is you know, whether you spend it efficiently. So I think um, where I am from the financial side, we've spent it efficiently. But I also think in terms of getting the balance right in the squad, we've done that. Last year, we went um, young. We knew that. We went development. We thought it was probably a two-year um, a two-year gig. Uh, but it was also affected by, <coughs> excuse me, affected by injuries in the pre-season, which then influenced who we signed and who we didn't sign. And uh, we ended up, I think, with five centre-halves. So um, it was unbalanced as a consequence. And what we've um, tried to do this year is make sure, A, we went early, and B, we um, balanced the team. So, you know, we took Norris on knowing that he had an injury, for example, but we were prepared to to um, ease him through the pre-season. Uh, um, you know, he's outside now training, so, you know, we, I've spoken to him this morning. Uh, he's really... He's, he's so keen to go, it's untrue. So I think in terms of where we are, we've got a balance that's right. I keep using the word. Uh, and we also believe we've got goal scorers in the building now, which was the biggest difficulty last year. First of all, to chat about the balance, you've bought in with some of the, uh, the, the new boys' experience that maybe you were lacking last season and that was maybe ended up being a, a, a crucial factor for you. Yeah, it was. I, I think at the end of the day, um, the biggest factor was the fact that we didn't we, we didn't finish the chances that we created. Um, I think, as regards uh, the importance of players who've been there, seen it, and done it, is that when things go against you, uh, it, and you know that the, they know what to do. That you know, they'll reset and they'll go again. They know it'll turn again. Um, whereas if you've got a lot of younger lads, then it's a bit difficult for them because they've never experienced that. And I, I know that from my personal experience as a player. So the, 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 the experience of the lads is, is important. Um, and the difficulty always is uh, getting the balance between uh, winning games and developing players. Now, we have to develop players at this club because that's part and parcel of our business model. It has to be when you're a lower league. Um, but you've also got to get the balance right in terms of winning games. And uh, we understand that. And I think that's, that's what you'll see reflected both in the, um, in, the, in the squad that we've got, but also in the team behind the team that we talk about. So we've been building up um, I, what I would call the daily context here, that everybody knows that A, there's competition for places and B, uh, they're here to develop and it doesn't matter what age they're at, they can get better. Yeah, and you're confident the fact that you've brought more goals into the squad because that ended up being the primary reason why you weren't able to push on and, uh, and compete for a playoff place? Yeah, I mean, if you look at um, Christian Dennis, for example, he came off a 20-goal season. So, you know, despite the fact that he's towards the end of his career age-wise, you know, he has that... I mean, I. I to some extent, I'm an old, I'm old-fashioned in the sense that I don't believe you can really teach goal scoring. Uh, I think there's, there's the instinctive element, isn't there? Absolutely. When the ball's out wide, you know you're getting into the box. You know you're going to get on the end of a cross, etc. You're going to get across a player, and you just uh, instinct is 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 a massive part of a a, a goal scorer's makeup. And so you know, Christian has, has proved that right the way through his career, and that isn't going to disappear overnight. So it's up to us to create the chances for him. Um, Luke Norris, everybody um, who knows Luke knows what type of player he is. Now, I would describe him probably as a tramway player, which is there's lots of aggression, um, 100% every game, all the time, right the way through the game as well. So, I mean, it would know, be exciting to see him mix together with some of the other um, talents that we've got there. You know, Hawks um, scored a lot of goals last season. I think he was 12, it was. 
um, looks good in the pre-season, etc. So, and then, we, then you've got exciting young talents. Um, Charlie Jolly, of course, I mentioned injuries last year, missed the whole season. Um, very first pre-season game behind closed doors, got assassinated in a tackle, uh, didn't play all season. So he and he was just starting to show through. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. Uh, and then, of course, we got Sam Sam Taylor, who's came through our college, um, not our academy. Uh, and is is looking a goal threat um, as well. So there's a real nice feel about the the mix that's there. And of course, there's the Saunders as well. Another Tramway player says 120 percent every game. Uh, I hate saying that as an accountant, but <laughs> he's you know he's 100 percent every game. Um, so a real mix. And Sam Taylor, lovely story towards the end of last season. That Charlie Jolly, you mentioned his campaign couldn't have been any more horrendous. But we know because of what we saw from him the season before that there is natural ability and also a, a, a willingness to learn and a willingness to work. Yeah, it is. It, I know what it's like when you get a bad injury, and it's it's really quite um, it's quite difficult at times to keep going when you know the light at the end of the tunnel is so far away. Now with that lad, he 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 basically at the start of the season knew that he probably wasn't going to play at all this season. He tried desperately to sort of get himself ready and he would have played, you know, he would have he would have put himself forward to play, but we were keen to there was no sense at the time at the end of the season where we were, there was no reason to try and blood him at that point in time and give him a bit more time to rest and go over the the pre season. So, you know, he he, he knows he he'll be a little bit ring rusty. Uh, and it's up to us to to make sure that he gets the minutes and time to um to continue to develop. I can't imagine what that must be like for a younger footballer. Difficult for a more experienced player to go through a whole season not being able to contribute, not being able to be properly part and parcel of the, the, the aspects of training and everything else. For a younger player, that must be really tortuous. Yeah, and again, it comes down to you haven't experienced it before, you haven't seen the people around you experience it, so it, it is. Uh, but as I say, Charlie was, um, you know, that's the reason why we gave him a contract and gave him a contract early, because his attitude was, was right. His attitude is what I think everybody at Tramia wants of a player. Um, he, he actually turned his hand to being uh, one of the guys who was interviewed around the, around the sort of the, the hospitality lounges on a match day. Um, and he did, he did a great job on it, to be quite Tell honest. Tell me a talking head. <laughs> Absolutely. But, uh, but uh, no, it, it's, it's for his ability and, and for, you know, his attitude was fantastic. So, you know, we all recognise he's got to get back up to speed again to get back to where he was. Um, but, you know, we're hopeful for him as well. Uh, uh, departures is always part and parcel uh, uh, of what happens at Tranmere and, and other clubs during the summer. And some of the players you would have earmarked as, you know, they're going to move on. Uh, Ethan Bristow, a player I'm sure in the perfect world you'd have liked to have kept, but he's, he's now over in the States with Minnesota United. How did that all come about? Yeah, and we lost Cogley as well. Yeah. And they were two flying fullbacks, probably the best fullback. Best in the league, aren't best they? Best fullback pairing in the league. Um, the story is that both of them could have gone in January. Yeah. And uh, we turned down offers for Bristow in January. We turned down offers for Cogley in January. Uh, you know, some of the per- perennial moaners will say, well, that's typical time, we're not getting any money for Cogley. But actually, if we sold them, they'd have said... Because at the time, you have to remember, you know, in January when we had... Um, we had what we thought was a decent window. There was still a shout as well, wasn't it? You know, for, 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 you know, the playoffs looked certainly within reach. Absolutely. And, and when you added in the players that were coming in, um, I would rather have kept Cogley, recognising that we would lose his money at the end of the season, but to get us a, an opportunity to... You know, he was the best um, fullback in the league, without a doubt. Um, but it was... Uh, so we kept him and uh, we had tried to, to offer him a contract before Christmas as well, but it was clear that he wanted to go and he just waited to see if we were going to go up. Um, and we, uh, as regards Bristow, um, same thing again. You know, you couldn't spend the money because what we really needed was a striker and you couldn't find a striker mm. at that point in time. So um, it was better to keep him and we felt he had still more mileage in him to develop. Um, he, he, one of the things that we also know is that once we get into a position whereby we do develop players and we actively try and develop them in training uh, once we get that around the game that we develop players and we move them on we don't just hang on to them it can be a real positive for attracting new talent absolutely and this morning i was talking to um 
uh, Ollie, the, the chief scout here, uh, and uh, that is one of the things that people have noticed already. That you know, both Cogley went, um, Bristow went, uh, and you know, we got leak. And to be quite honest, for those who turned up on Saturday, they would have thought Bristow was still playing. Um, and he, he and he looks a real a real prospect. We haven't we've only got him on loan at this point in time. But you know, sometimes these loans will turn into our signings, and that's what we want to do. Uh, and you know, we continue to look. Even at this stage, I know we're happy with the squad as it is. Um, we're looking to upgrade. You're always on the lookout, aren't you? Yeah, because you can always upgrade. And um, you know, the, the Premier League season. Um, starts starting a bit later than last year, so they're not quite at the stage whereby they're saying, "Well, these guys can go out on loan, and these guys won't." So, you know, we we continue to look at that. But you know, if we if we have to go uh, a week on Saturday, we're, we're happy with the squad we've got um, a, a, as it stands at the moment. But again, you're always looking to improve if you can. Away from the playing side, uh, briefly, I know you've just agreed a new sponsorship deal with SR. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know, I was really pleased because uh, what people don't understand about SR, uh, and we're, 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 we're quite precious about who we have on the front of our shirts, to be quite honest. And every corporate comes with baggage, and you might actually say, you know, because it's, it's gone out. We, we're not virtue signaling, but we, we, we don't want, I don't want, um, a gambling sponsor on the front of the shirts. And, and that was then picked up a few seasons ago, and people have made a lot out of it. And I don't think that you need a gambling sponsor on your shirts. And SL is a classic example. And what we tried to do was to get, we had B&M before, a local business, um, and they were great supporters of us through the non-league years. SR came on board. SR, people don't realise, it's the old shell refinery down yeah. at the end of, 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 um, of the Mersey. And historically very important to, to, to Wirral. Historically very important to Wirral. Lots of um, employees, uh, lots of our fans work there uh, at the site and also the Tramway Oil Terminal. That, uh, people don't realise that imports 16% of the UK's crude oil. Now, all the Green Party would say, well, you know, hang on a minute. You know, you've, uh, and as I say, every corporate comes with baggage. But what people don't know is that SR is um, it's about to invest 2.6 billion US, $2.6 billion into this area. And that is because it's part and parcel of um, an energy transition plan for the group. They're going to put four billion, four point six billion into it globally, but two point six is going to two point six. I think it is is going to come into this area. Massive part of the government's plans for energy transition. And here on Little Tramia, you know, there are sponsors, and for a reason because they know that we're linked into the community here. And you know, if I'm looking at um, after I've gone, what 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 do I want? I want long term partners who are rooted in the community. You know, so we have Wirralbrook Council as one of our partners, and we have SR as one of our partners who's investing in this area, and that's a massive thing for me. And I think that you know that shouldn't be um, dismissed. Your new management <coughs> dream team, to coin a popular phrase, uh, Ian Dawes and Nigel Adkins, and I know you've been a, a friend of uh, of Nigel's for. A long, long time, and and uh, great links with Tramier as well. And Ian Dawes sort of has impressed, hasn't he, so far as a manager? Uh, how's that all working out? The two, the two guys together. Yeah, it's something I've always wanted to get to um, because I've said this a number of times. The 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 industries, football industry is actually not. You know, you, if you look at it, um, you have a single point of failure standing in the dugouts every week. Now, if you're trying to recruit a manager, it is a single point of failure. Yeah, just, just broaden that one a little yeah. bit. Well, people talk about a single point of accountability, you know, and, and, and that's an important, in business, that's one. But actually, when the team fails, it's, it's down to the manager and the manager gets sacked. If you try and recruit, just think about it, if you're trying to recruit um, a manager, an experienced manager, they've always been a failure. They've all been sacked. If he's, if he's experienced. So, so if you start to look at it from that point of view, you say, well, hang on. So I'll go for a young coach. Anytime you get a young coach in, he's not experienced, the fans will be harsh. They'll give him 10 games maybe. And, or they'll say he's a cheap option. So how do you get a young coach in and give him a fair crack of the whip? Now, you can try and do it and just, you know, talk to the guy and understand, you know, we've got injuries or understand there's this or that and the other. Because nobody 
management wise has been experienced until they've got experience absolutely um so so what i was trying to do was to put in place somebody whom a was inexperienced but i knew him and had seen him work and b i then wrapped around him a a protective um barrier basically so the people can't accuse him of being inexperienced and da 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 um there's a very experienced head in Nigel there who's who's done it been it seen it and done it got the badge 15 times and actually uh, is is there not a threat to Dorsey but actually to assist with his with his knowledge his experience his contacts um and just to balance that off and then beneath uh, Dorsey I brought in another guy both of whom know the club Nigel knows the club well and, and Danzi, who impressed when he was here, you know, and, he, and he's been right the way through all the leagues, Premier League included, and did a great job at Macclesfield. And was once, involved at Liverpool recently as well, yeah, wasn't and he? Yeah, and a coach. And, and it's important that you get this coaching ethic right through the club. But he's also somebody who is always wanting to learn, and that's what I love about um, the place here. Everybody wants to learn. That's what I want in the place. Nobody thinks they know, know it all. And Danzi, every time I see him, I say, what have you learned? You know, and, and he's there to learn, to be a manager. He's he very to. enthusiastic, isn't he? Absolutely. So is Nigel. Um, Dorsey gets a bit serious <laughs> at times, but is a good lad as well. And then underneath that, you've got Parkey, who, again, fantastic coach. Was, was of course, head of the academy, a development coach. Um, you've got Alan Morgan, again, try a guy through and through. So it, it's this balance of having um, having knowledge of Tramere, having you know I, I, you, I'm just looking out the window. This is a fabulous place to work here at this at this place. And I actually said to Nicky once I'd put the whole team in place, I said, "Well, you know, actually I'd love to go into work with them every day. They're a group of guys you'd mm. want to do." And that's right the way through the squad. Add on that the the added balance in terms of the experience of the guys down there on the training ground. And there's a tremendously positive atmosphere around the place. That That's I think, important, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think, it, you know, we went through a season last year, and I keep saying this, in, in the nine years we've been here, last year was the first season that we had. We had nothing to play for. Mm. Uh, 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 you know, and, and people say to me, do you want to, uh, how do you, what, what, what targets you set on a manager? I never do, because I expect everybody who's here at Tramere expects us to get promoted out of League Two and wants to do that. I can give you the reasons and the not excuses as to why it didn't happen last year. Mm. I can rationalise it, the injuries we got in the pre-season and so forth and so on, and, 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 and right the way through the season, the injuries we got in January and February, which finished us off. But the reality is, when people say to me, what's success? I say, well, is it getting promoted? And if people say yes, I say, well, we've been in the league 102 years. We've been promoted seven times. So 90-odd percent of the time, we're not successful, if that's your definition. Um, I was involved in three of them, by the way. Um, it, it can never be that simplistic, no, can it, absolutely. as a definition? So my definition would be we have something to play for right to the end of the season. And progress. Progress, yeah, yeah. No, I'd add that. I would not really thought about that, but right to the end of the season. And the other thing I would say is um, we'd have some seminal moments in the season that you can think back, that was a fantastic game, you can go away. We beat Leighton Orient, top of the table, mm. great game. We played Newcastle, great. You know, previous season we went to, we went to Wembley and, and the Papa John, etc. And so, well, the season before that. But, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's always about um, providing those moments that when you go back to people's memories, that's what the memories are. You know, 3-0 down at Watford and we drew 3 all and took them back to our place and beat them. And, and so... It, it's, it's giving people that every time and understanding. What, what, all I ask for from our fans is to understand that everybody uh, around the club is, is focused on the same thing, trying to do the best they can, you know, um, and they work very hard, the people behind the scenes. Uh, and, but when I came, it was always, and I think it happens at a lot of clubs, it was always whatever the club did was criticised. And they, they Unfortunately, that, that's the nature of football fandom everywhere now, isn't it? It, it is. It, I, I don't know where this sort of, and I won't say widespread because it isn't everybody, but it, it's the noise, quite often the noisy element. You know, as you mentioned before, sometimes things happen that are out of your control that you don't want to happen and you have to cope with them. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, um, it, you know, I, I put it down to anti-social media. I just think that it's, it's uh, I think humans have to learn to live with new technologies and we haven't learned how to do it yet. And so people who have opinions, uh, everybody can have an opinion, but whether it's valid or not, but you can gather a posse on social media quite quickly around. So, for example, there was the one came up because the, the com, I don't look at it. So the comms guys gave me this one. were saying that, you know, people were, um, when Cogley left, they were saying, oh, well, he, 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 he didn't bother after Christmas. So I said, well, give me the stats. And we uh, have the stats for all the players and... Um, it showed that his stats actually improved after Christmas. You know, so this opinion, which was founded on nothing other than presumably somebody thought, well, maybe I uh, got the pace. Uh, and, and it's just a cl- classic example. You know, facts settle arguments, opinions cause them. And, you know, unfortunately, people get a, a, a big platform with social media for their opinions, which, you know, valid to them, but... What I don't like is when people just follow it without actually challenging it. You've been in football a long time, Mark. You've, you've done more or less every job there is to do. But I can sense, and I know whenever I see you it's the same, but I can sense a real enthusiasm for, for what's to come over the next nine, ten months or so. Yeah, I think so. There's lots of, there's lots of big things that are happening uh, around the club and um, we will continue to push the projects that I want to push. I want to develop the campus with the council, uh, our training ground, which is already, I think, a, you know, at least, a, 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 well, it is, a, it is a championship standard training ground. Um, I want to look at where the stadium goes. Uh, around about October time, I think the new fan park will be up, uh, which will be interesting um, for, for fans. Um, and then, of course, you can't dismiss it. You know, it, everything sort of focuses around what you do on the pitch in terms of the feel good factor. Uh, and you know, I was talking to to Parky this morning, and he said, "Yeah, it's it's the best atmosphere he's felt in the dressing room, mm-hmm. you know, for a long time." Uh, and we've had some good years in in in, in the last few years. You know, we've footballers been to... can sense that, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I think that uh, it, it it rubs off again on the young lads. Uh, but one of the important things that um, probably fans don't see is that when you put uh, your staff together, your team behind a team, um, and you also put your dressing room together, um, it, it is, it's very important that, uh, that the culture is a positive culture. And that, you know, I remember the first season, I, I was at university and, I, and I, I trained in the pre-season before I signed pro, uh, and I've been at the club for four years, and we started off on a, um, a 400 metres, and I, c- I could run for Britain. And so I just I launched myself out to the front, uh, and went right round, and we started the second 400, and then Alan King put his hand on my shoulder and said, "Life's a marathon, not a sprint, son." <laughs> <laughs> but actually, the, 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 what I'm trying to get to is is the culture here is one of constant improvement. Mm. So, you know, do the best that you can and do better than that if you can. And I think the older guys, you know, won't be holding players back. They'll be encouraging them to go forward. And that's a massive, massive, massive plus.